Hey guys, Ben here from the COE and Rifle Colorado with a few more tips on TAC 4.0. Today we're going to cover um, changing your call sign, uh, the orientation of the map, chat status or roster check, uh, network connections, downloading your own offline maps, and connecting to Gotenna. We'll start with the easiest, changing your call sign and color. Go to the three dots, settings, and my call sign is the first option. Type your name and choose your team. It's generally a color and pick one that's bright. Darker ones tend to be hard to see on satellite maps. The role doesn't really matter so you can leave that as a team member. But remember to choose a call sign that is recognizable especially in mutual aid situations. TAC was developed for military users with the phone fixed to their arms or chest. So, intentionally, it does not auto-rotate. You have to force it into the layout you want. I prefer the horizontal, mostly because I see more menu options in the top bar. And I frequently mount it to my chest for search and rescue operations. You pick your preference. One of the functions I use frequently is the chat button. Not necessarily to chat, but to see who is currently connected to my TAC group. It's an easy roster check in route to a call or assignment. You can send any user a message by clicking on the message balloon next to the user's name. If you want to find them on the map, click directly on their name and the map will be centered on them. Short messages can travel by Gotenna in the event of a voice communication failure. The network connection icon is a status indicator. It's a little dot above your call sign and coordinates. If it is green, you should be connected to your group through a cellular connection. If it is red, you are either disconnected or only communicating via Gotenna. If it's red and you think it should be connected, it could be a timed out connection. You can force TAC to try to reconnect through the following. Go to Settings, TAC Servers, and uncheck then recheck the box at the far right of the screen. Give it a minute or so before looking for advanced help. Downloading your own map sections is handy if you're going to an unfamiliar area or know you will have a poor data connection. Using TAC while you're recreating is a great way to build familiarity. First, click on the trifold map and ensure you're on the online setting. If you're not, the source maps will be disabled. I'd recommend using the USGS Topo map source. You can download satellite images as well, but that level of detail isn't usually necessary offline. But you decide what will work best for your mission. Click the Select Area button and choose the shape you'd like to draw for selection. Normally that's a rectangle. Click the corners of your desired download and then you'll see a blue slider. This is setting the resolution of your map. I typically move the right one to 1 or 2 meters. If the size is greater than 300,000 tiles, it forces you to reduce the size of the download. Click Download, create a new tile set and name it. Large downloads can take several hours, so plan ahead. If you don't like the final resolution, do a different one. Once it's completed, you'll find the map in the local list of maps. As I mentioned earlier, TAC was designed for military users. Most non-military don't have a robust satellite network to use as their link to the outside world. In cellular denied areas, TAC functions like a GPS navigator. It won't show the locations of other users without some assistance. So several companies have come up with devices that create a local network. Common ones are Gotenna, Beartooth, and more sophisticated mesh networking radios. Most will Bluetooth connect to TAC and broadcast position updates, as well as listen for other users broadcasting their location updates. Connectivity among users is never a guarantee. Without getting too deep, the range of these devices is similar to an old VHF or voice radio. Evaluate your needs for offline use and push forward. No budget solution offers perfect coverage. That said, 
we frequently utilize the GoTenna Pro X for field operations. Connecting to a new GoTenna normally requires an internet connection. You'll need the GoTenna in your physical possession to complete this process. Click on the three dots to get the scroll down menu. Select GoTenna. Click the blue bar that says Get Started. Click the GoTenna Pro X picture on the left. And here you'll have to enter some login information. It should say Logging In, then click the blue button to agree. Turn the GoTenna on and click Next. It should say Connecting. Use the Test button to make sure they are connected. The GoTenna will blink three times if they are. Then click Next and choose the frequency set to use. Most users will only have one choice. Click Tune and Finish. Sometimes you'll get a warning indicating that the antenna is bad. Just click the button Ignore Forever. That's some glitch. You should be good to go. The GoTenna will blink every 30 seconds or so when it sends a position update. You can change the reporting interval using the GoTenna plugin. You'd do that to save battery. Alternatively, you could carry a small battery to extend its life. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, visit our website, cofiretech.org, and like us on Facebook. See you next time.